The Transmission of Magical Knowledge to Children Look, you can only pass on information to someone close to you. If you are working at the level of your bloodline, it has to be your relative. You know, the members of your bloodline, the members of your family, most likely belong to different castes. If the bloodline is strong, there are not only laborers, but also members of different castes. There are laborers who don't need to know this information, and there are merchants who could be harmed by it. This information can only be given to people who are at least at the level of the warrior caste. You will therefore need to make a clear decision about who in your family belongs to the warrior caste and who will be your successor. And how old should he be? I once made a mistake in deciding who would be my successor. Children should be taught magic from the age of 11, 11 and a half, 12. At 16, it is too late to start. The foundations must be laid between the ages of 11 and 12, when puberty begins. It is during this process, when there is a hormonal surge, that an enormous amount of inner psychic power needs to be directed into a particular channel. By the age of 16 this power is already being directed, and believe me, not towards magic. Up to this age, children are unlikely to understand anything because they have very little experience of life and their energy is only enough for the growth of the physical body. So girls can be taught magic after their first menstruation, when they enter adulthood. And the boys can be taught at the age when they start having emissions, when they also enter adulthood. That's when you can start giving information. But what does it mean to start giving information? It means that you have to direct the child's thoughts and energy into a certain channel. You don't have to give all the information. If you try to teach a 12-year-old child advanced mathematics, he will hardly understand anything and will soon forget it. You have to give a child the basics first. So first you dig a channel through which the energy will flow and that channel will go in a certain direction. And the future life of a child will change exactly in the direction of that flow in the direction of that channel. So the best way to understand who your successor should be is to watch your children and grandchildren closely and choose a suitable person from among them, or even several people, if you have a large and diverse family. But usually this kind of knowledge is passed on from one person to another within the bloodline, within the family. If you had an organization, it is clear that you would choose apprentices who are not related to you by blood or marriage. That is why you have to decide at which level you are going to work, at the level of the family or at the level of the higher egregores. At what egregorial level will you create a structure dedicated to the dissemination of knowledge? Do we have to do this? You have to. Otherwise, unfortunately, Space will not provide you with the necessary resources. And it is obliged to provide them if you are doing the right thing from the point of view of the forces that give you this knowledge. Because all knowledge needs to be disseminated. It's just a question of to whom, where and how. Long ago, this knowledge was secret and hidden and could only be passed on from teacher to apprentice. Later this knowledge became a science and was passed on to a group of people, but again this group was separate and closed. And then this knowledge, which was scientific, became popular. Physics and mathematics were taught to everyone at school. Did you understand the logic? And whereas in the past such a serious science as algebra was only passed on from teacher to apprentice, it was very sacred information that could not be given to uninitiated laymen. Now it is open to all. Everyone learns algebra because it is a feature of our time, a feature of our age. It is the same with the knowledge I am giving you. Just 100 years ago, if I had spread this knowledge in public lectures like this, I would probably have been shot as soon as I finished my speech. 20 years ago, they would have put me in an asylum. They would have kept me alive, but my rights would have been severely restricted. But now I can do all this completely free, and not because our state has become more tolerant. 
It has become more tolerant because the time has come for such information to be shared. And maybe it can't be shared with everyone yet, but it can be shared with a closed group. Accordingly, the next generation, who will take this information from me, after I'm gone, will pass it on to everyone in schools, on television, and so on. This is how the continuity of information happens.